I am Dr. Tony Roy. I'm an orthopedic trauma surgeon in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I've been in practice for 11 years, now working at a level one trauma center where I've had a pretty huge amount of experience with pelvic fractures and acetabular fractures. About four or five years ago, I met the folks in Orlando who were involved with ITS and explained to them that I had some ideas about a new acetabulum fracture system that I wanted to design and uh, they believed in me and so I ended up working with the group in Austria with the engineers and the owner of the company Rene Bernsteiner to design the PRS Revolution X pelvic fracture system. Um, the design process involved working with a couple of other very busy acetabulum fracture surgeons who are from London. They work at the Royal London Hospital which is the largest level one trauma center in the United Kingdom and with the engineers in Austria who have a lot of experience working with the uh, types of metals that are used in the pelvic fracture system. The process was basically um, going over the different types of pelvic fractures and acetabulum fractures that I felt like there were no current solutions for um, and designing a plate that would work more intimately with the intrapelvic types of procedures that we're doing these days, the less invasive approaches, the so-called STAPA approach, which is a small incision in the lower abdomen, and in combination with a, uh, a lateral window, which is a small incision over the iliac wing. The idea behind these plates is that they're supposed to be used intrapelvic, and they're supposed to be used in concert with a um, minimally invasive approach to the inside of the pelvis versus the way things used to be done in the past, where we make huge incisions and put giant plates and screws all over the place on the inside. Um, this system is a lot different from anything uh, that has been around for the last 30 years. So most of the pelvic fracture systems that people were using up to this point were just reconstruction plates essentially that they would contour in the operating room and put on the fractures. Um, there has been no innovation in technology in pelvic fracture management in literally 30 years with the exception of the striker uh, plating system which was just launched in the last one to two years. Um, the ideology behind the striker system is similar to ours. They do have intrapelvic plates. The difference is that our system uses pure titanium, you have locking options, and the plates in my opinion are a little bit more um, revolutionary uh, in terms of their applications for intrapelvic fractures. And the, the so-called blinky plate, the posterior wall plate, Striker has nothing like that at all. And so that's something that sets us totally apart from the, uh, the rest of the competition. The thing to me that's most exciting about this fixation system is the fact that, it, that it's born out of 10 years of my own experience. It really is a system that I designed based on the hundreds, if not thousands, of acetabulum fractures that I have encountered and the problems that I've faced using 30-year-old technology from Synthes. Uh, and now I have something that I saw in my mind that I can hold in my hand and actually use that's very effective for treating these types of injuries. Um, the important things that you need to know about this system is that it's titanium, it's not stainless steel, and the user characteristics are very different and the surgeons are going to get frustrated um, their first couple of go-arounds there especially guys who've been using synthes or the old Mata system for a long time are going to be used to the plates being bendable in their fingers um, which i personally think is a disadvantage but the these plates won't do that um, so they they're going to have to be a little bit more uh, accepting of the fact that the plates won't just automatically contour themselves to the bone um, make sure that they, they uh, again, understand that the plates are not going to be quite as malleable as the systems that they are used to and that they have a, a pretty strong understanding of that going into the case so they don't get frustrated when the plate doesn't bend in their hands like they're used to it working. But it will pull down on the bone if they put screws in it and suck it into position. Um, we have a couple of things that are unique to our system that... Um, might be exciting for them, um, especially if you work in an area where there are a lot of elderly patients. Um, we've designed this thing called the shark fin, which is basically a plate that is designed to treat a fracture of the quadrilateral surface. So all these old people these days are falling in their femoral head, 
goes through here and it busts a hole in the quadrilateral plate. And uh, traditionally, the recon plates were not a great way to address this problem. But through the stoppa, you can make an incision here and access the quadrilateral plate and then make another incision over the lateral window. And then you can introduce this shark fin plate that we've designed. What do I do with the plate? Here it is. So here it is, it looks like shark fin, and it's got some holes in the top for screws. And the idea is that it slides in through the lateral window and then it goes over the quadrilateral surface and it sits like this. And they put screws here and here to hold it. And it's just simply a buttress plate just to hold that quadrilateral plate into position. And um, we, we designed, actually that was the wrong side. We designed a, uh, an introducer. So one of the philosophies that I was trying to employ in designing these plates was the idea that the fixation should work with the reduction tools. So one of the problems with pelvic fracture surgery is that you fix the fracture with K-wires and clamps and stuff like that, and then there's no room to put the plate and screws in. So my thinking was, why can't we make instruments that work with the plates and screws? So, so the, the plate fits on here. You slide it in through your lateral window like this, and you pull the fracture into position. And this thing goes on here like that. And there is a spike that goes on here. So you can see how this spike is going to go in like that up against the bone right there. And it holds this in position. And then they have this little wheel that they can put on there and they can tighten it up. So this is a reduction tool that will hold the plate in position so they can then put in the screws. And then they take this whole thing apart and they're good to go. Um, just going through each of the plates with you a little bit so you understand what they do. Um, we call this the chicken foot. There are two sizes of the chicken foot, a big one and a little one. Um, we, the big one we have decided is obsolete and we're not going to make it anymore. And actually, this is going to go away in the next year and it's going to be replaced by a plate that looks kind of like this. It'll be, pretend this isn't here, it'll be a, a brim plate like this with the chicken foot attached to it. So it'll be pretty similar to the um, to the idea of the shark fin, it has a branch that hangs down inside of the pelvis. So this is after a year of using these plates in London and here in the U.S. We've decided that it makes more sense to have these two combined together. Okay, and that that should be coming to a tray near you soon. So this is a plate that I actually use quite a bit. It's a, it's a standard recon brim plate, but it's also got a little branch sticking off of it. And the way that this works is you, you put the plate on the brim of the pelvis like that, and you've got a branch coming down in here that you can put screws through if you need to address a fracture of the quadrilateral plate. You have your standard pubic symphysis plates, which are um, pretty similar to the ones that were in the large frag set. This is a, a column plate, okay? So this is pre-contoured to put on the posterior column of the acetabulum. So it sits along the brim. Find the part on this pelvis that it fits on. Yeah. Problem is that plastic sawbones usually are a little different. It's going to be something like that. So it sits down in this area right here, and it enables you to have a recon plate on the retroastabular surface, and you get a couple of extra screw options there instead of having to um, put in a longer plate. The shorter one will fit on there better for you. There we go. That's how it goes. 
So it's to fix a, a posterior column fracture. It gives you a couple screws up here in the superior bone. Okay. Um, this has been one of the most popular plates. It's called Blinky uh, because it looks like the ghost on Pac-Man, Blinky, on the x-ray. And this is really great for big posterior wall fractures, which by the way is the most common acetabulum fracture. So it sits like this on the retroacetabular bone. Um, it does take a little bit of contouring. And um, they actually have now more than one screw hole in this one that I'm holding in my hand right now. So you're gonna wanna have a, one that has three holes on the end of it. Um, because that's what the surgeon is going to want to have. Here we go. So the really cool thing about Blinky, so you see how that fits there, is that this part, the, the ghost part of it, distributes the force on the back of the acetabulum. It enables you places where you can put sutures for the labrum, lots of places for drill holes, for lag screws. And the thing that I think is really cool about it is that we put this Y shape up here so that you can get two screws like this. One thing that's really hard about fixing a posterior wall is getting screws up here because the butt muscle's right here. And it's really hard to fight against that and try to drill. So it's nice you've got these two screw options instead of putting a long recon plate and having to fight the butt muscle and put a screw way up above. Uh, I think that essentially are, are all of the plates. Um, you should have a French press in the operating room when you're, when you're doing these cases. Um, they can bend the plate a little bit. They can bend it in multiple planes of motion. And they're going to be used to using a French press because that's what they're going to use if they did a striker or a synthes case for the last 10 years. Um, that's how those plates were bent. So you need to have that available. The other thing is that you, you really want to ask them to use the ball spike, the picador, especially when they're doing the posterior wall plate, because they're gonna put it down and they're gonna put a screw in it and it may stick off the bone a little bit. They need to take the ball spike and just pound it and flatten it out and put it in the right spot or take a, a, um, a, a home in or something like that and bend it inside to you so that it fits in position. Um, Again, it's, you have the option for locking. 99 out of 100 pelvic fracture surgeons are gonna tell you there's no indication for locking in the pelvis. I agree with that. Um, but at the same time, I have used locking screws in the pelvis on occasion, rarely, but it is nice to have that possibility, especially if you have a really osteoporotic fracture, um, you can put a couple of locking screws in a place where the bone is otherwise really crappy.